like to take you on a journey, a journey into the power and significance of the most important life forms on our planet, the ones that have done the most to shape this pale blue dot that we call home. Now, arguably, our relationship with these life forms is probably one of the most important relationships we will ever have. These are the microbes. It's estimated that there are well over 5 million trillion microbes and bacteria that inhabit our Earth. They're everywhere. They're in the most extreme environments, and they cover every surface of the world. Now, if we could see them as we can here, this is the Grand Prismatic in Yellowstone Park. And those beautiful colors are the bacteria that live in and around the hot water. Now, if you could attach a fluorescent dye to bacteria and then look around you, everything you see right now would be bright fluorescent. The walls, the floor, the chairs that you're sitting on, everything would fluoresce. And most especially ourselves. This is a map of all the microbial communities that live on our skin. Our bodies are covered in microbes, and we have trillions more of them living inside of us. Now, for some of us, that might be a scary thought. And it would be really understandable why some of us are horrified of the thought of bacteria being everywhere. We can think of the plague bubonic plague, otherwise known as Black Death, killed over a third of the world's population at the time. And it was caused by a little bacteria called Yersinia pestis. Now, we didn't know that back in the 1340s. It wasn't until the 1800s where Louis Pasteur firmly established the germ theory of disease. We now had firm evidence that these microbes actually caused infectious diseases. And this was the start of what we call modern medicine. Much of modern medicine has become a war on the microbes. We need to kill these microbes. Their destruction means our survival. And to give it the credit that it deserves, clean water, basic sanitation has done, it saved many lives, and it still saves many lives today. But because of this success, our war on the microbes has seemed justified. We continue to wage war on a daily basis in our homes, where all of the products that we have need to have some kind of antimicrobial in them in order for them to be effective. And we don't let our children play in the dirt, and we squirt hand sanitizer on everything, and then we feel safe and protected. And even our foods have to be sterilized and sanitized and pasteurized, and then we put them in these nice hygienic packages, and we feel safe. And we don't really care that most of the nutritional value is gone from them. At least we can put them on our shelves and they won't go bad, because the microbes are the problem and they cause all the food spoilage too. And in medicine, antibiotics are seen as the cure for almost every ailment. We even treat viral colds with antibiotics. And like I used to tell my patients, a viral cold will get better in seven days with an antibiotic or in a week without them. <laughs> and we have successfully reduced and eradicated the scourge of infectious disease in our world with this war on microbes approach. But unfortunately, we're now starting to appreciate the downside to this picture of success and progress. The microbes are resilient creatures, and they're starting to fight back. And in fact, all of the antibiotics that we use today actually come from microbes in the first place. They use them to fight with each other. So it makes sense that they have defenses for them, and they're starting to use those defenses to fight back against what we're doing to them. And it's ironical that our attempts to eradicate pathogens has ultimately increased our susceptibility to them. But putting infections aside, our war on microbes has created a brand new epidemic, that of chronic disease. How many of you have a chronic disease or have a family member or loved one with a chronic disease? And how many of you have never taken antibiotics in the past three years? It's a, it's a good crowd. <laughs> 
We now know that there's much more to the story of microbes than pathogens that need to be eliminated. We now know that the microbes that cover our Earth, and most importantly, the ones that are in and on us, are essential to making us the healthy humans that we're meant to be. We depend on these tiny organisms to do so many things that keep us healthy. And unfortunately, we've been carpet bombing whole villages trying to get at that one bad guy without realizing that the villagers have already put him in a jail. And it's the good guys that are protecting us from the bad guys. Collectively, all of these organisms that live in and on us are called our microbiome. Most of them live in our gut. And as I said, they keep us healthy. They perform so many essential functions. So what happens when we start to destroy these microbes, when we have the war against them? As I mentioned, we've now introduced chronic disease that affects us and so many of our family members. In fact, you can't think of one chronic disease that doesn't have the microbiome or a disruption of the microbiome implicated at some level. And chronic diseases are much more of an epidemic than even the plague was. 50% of people worldwide have a chronic disease, and they kill 60% of people across the world. Diseases that you would not even think of that are linked to each other are actually linked, and they all are associated with the microbiome or a disruption in the microbiome. Just some of the diseases that are associated in the scientific literature with the microbiome are listed here. And it's not only disease. It's actually hard to think of one thing that our body does that's not influenced or controlled by the microbiome. Things like circadian rhythm. Our microbes have their own biological clock that actually influences ours. Our mood. Pregnancy. The ability to get pregnant and pregnancy outcomes. And even our method of birth, whether we're born by C-section, influences the, gut, the bugs that start to grow there. And we know that children that are born by C-section have higher rates of obesity and allergies. It affects how drugs work. It affects our ability to exercise, the Michael Jordan video that you just saw. And our immune system is trained and it's controlled by our microbiome. And it's clearly connected to and influences our brain. As we've always intuitively known when we refer to a gut feeling or a gut instinct, or we tell our children to trust their gut. We're essentially an ecosystem living in symbiosis with our microbes. We have as many, if not more, microbes living in our gut than we have human cells. And we have 800 times more microbial genes than we have human genes. And each of these microbial ecosystems that live in us are as unique to us as our fingerprint. Now that we know the importance of the microbiome, how do we actually know whether we have a healthy microbiome or not? First of all, we know that a healthy human microbial ecosystem is diverse. Just like a rainforest has high biodiversity that keeps it healthy. We know that a microbiome that's diverse is much more robust and resilient. And thus, we're more robust and resilient when we have a diverse microbiome. Unfortunately, many of our microbiomes are starting to look like this. One of the most important factors that promotes a healthy microbiome is our diet. There's no doubt that the food that we eat has a profound effect on our microbiome. As you can think, it's the first thing that's going to see anything that we take in. And ultimately, we're not just eating for our own bodies, we're eating for our microbiome. And they, in turn, affect our health. So what do we eat to feed our microbiomes? As you just heard, there is so much variability in humans. We are all completely unique. One nutrient might be 
have a very beneficial effect in one person, it might have a neutral effect in another person, and it might have a negative effect in another person. There is no one diet that's right for everyone, and there's no one diet that's right for one person throughout their whole life. It changes over time. And this variability is mostly due to our microbiomes. So how do we know what our unique microbiomes need in order to prevent chronic disease and maintain our health today? How do we know how they're going to respond to specific foods and whether a food that we eat is going to be beneficial or harmful for us? Well, first of all, we need to open up that long, dark tube where our microbiome lives. Now, science has been trying to do this for many years, and it's been a challenging task. Our tools were limited. We started out using methods like culture, where we would grow these bugs in a Petri dish. Now, this works for about 20% of the bugs that can grow in oxygen, but 80% of the bacteria in our gut are anaerobic. And so as soon as they leave our body, they're going to die. So clearly, we miss most of what's there when we use this method. Newer technologies have been able to utilize the DNA that's inside the bacteria. We can use this to identify them. So most researchers, most companies today, use a technology called 16S. And 16S looks at a fraction of the DNA that's inside each bacteria. And it's great. It helps us identify at a very high level what's there. But these technologies have a lot of drawbacks. For example, they don't see viruses at all. Viruses are a very important part of our microbiome, and we're starting to appreciate how important they are in our overall health and wellness. So if we want to get a full view of what's happening in our microbiome, we really need to see them. We need to also see all the species of fungi and yeast that live in our gut. Again, the technology of 16S misses these. So to understand what's in our gut, what can we do? It's sort of as good as the data or the tools we have to look at it. And you can use the analogy of what is out there right now as a camera. And this is the view we can get with that camera. We get a nice fuzzy silhouette. So it's understandable when people say, OK, I know the importance of the microbiome. I know its effect on our health. But what do you do about it? Right? We have to have better tools. This is full DNA sequencing of the bacteria. We actually get a much better view. We can see who they are, and we can even get a sense of what they're capable of doing. But the newest technology, that of sequencing the RNA, or what we call metatranscriptomics, tells us precisely who they are and what they're actually doing. This is a technology I feel very fortunate to be a part of, and it comes from over a decade of research at a national lab. And this technology is opening up what was previously a black box. We can now see the microbiome at an unprecedented level. And we can use this exact same technology of RNA sequencing to look at our human gene expression. And we can see the interaction of what the microbiome is doing and what our human reaction to it is. And then when we add on all of the biochemical products that happen from these reactions, we get a very robust picture. We can now identify these complex biochemical pathways that are being carried out by our microbes and by ourselves. And we also can start to see what we need to do to optimize them. This is really the power of what we call omics technology. Omics is simply the complement of all of these things. The genome is all of your DNA. The transcriptome, which is what we've been talking about, is all of your RNA. And all of the biochemical products or metabolites, we call the metabolome. So as you can imagine, this can generate an enormous amount of data. So what do we do with that enormous amount of data? 
that's probably more than the human brain or even the human microbial brain is capable of dealing with. So we need to power or harness the power of artificial intelligence in order to start making sense of all of this data and understand what's happening in you and then what we can do about it. So we've learned a lot from this data so far. And from our data, the microbiome alone can tell us a lot of things. It can tell us what kind of exercise you're doing, whether you're doing high-intensity exercise. That microbe you saw in the Michael Jordan video, we can actually see that in what it's doing. We can tell what kind of diet you're eating, whether you eat a lot of meat, a lot of fruit or bread, and we can tell, most importantly, if they're benefiting you. For example, there's microbes that ferment protein. And these fermentation products from protein, in some people, cause a lot of detrimental byproducts. These are associated with a huge number of diseases, including aging. So wouldn't you like to know if that paleo diet you're following is actually benefiting you or not? We now have the ability to see that. We can also see if things like pomegranate juice are benefiting you. So pomegranate juice, the ellagic acid in pomegranate juice, needs to be converted by the bacteria in our gut into a compound called urolithin A. It's the urolithin A that is an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. If you don't have the microbes that are capable of doing this, what's the point of drinking pomegranate juice just because someone says it's good for you? You might want to focus on something else that will have more benefit for you. We can also see the effect of a lot of other nutrients on, um, that, that require the gut in order to be metabolized and to have its benefits. Things like soy, things like green tea. So our microbes, they're really our friends. And we need to get to know them. We need to get to know their names. We need to get to know their favorite food. We need to get to know what they like to do what their boss is like, what makes them happy. And as we get to know them, we develop a relationship with them. And as good friends do, they're then going to be there to help us when we need them. So it's now possible to imagine a world where chronic disease is a matter of choice and not a matter of bad luck. A world where our genes are not our destiny. A world where we don't have to wait for symptoms before we know there's a problem and what to do about it. A world where you're empowered to know what choices to make that will help you reach your goals today. And we now can have a world where we live in harmony with our microbes and the bodies that we live in them. Thank you.